can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm going to have to head home very soon because of the rain. It's been such a dry summer and to be chased home by the rain is very strange. But before I go home, I'm going to finish picking as many of these calendula flowers as I can. And I've introduced these flowers to you in previous videos. They come in a range of colors. My favorite are the orange, but they also come in yellow. And I also have another variety that I'm growing this year. And they're kind of a more of a lightly pinkish tinged yellowy type of calendula flower. And um, I'm going to be taking these home and drying out the petals and using them in making some calendula oil and also calendula balms and creams. I'm going to show you how I start that process off. Now, as far as growing these, it's super simple. So in the spring, I scattered the seeds in a drill along here and covered them up, watered them and let them go. And here on the Isle of Man, they can be a quite a hardy plant and can survive the winter. And I've got some calendula over in the berry patch that's from last year. In other places, if you've got a really cold winter, you're gonna to have to grow it as an annual, but it's dead easy. The other thing is, is that they self seed readily. So if you don't pick the flowers, they will form into, let's see here. Yeah, like this. They will form into seed heads really easily. And when that matures, it will release dozens of calendula seeds all in this area, which is great if you want calendula flowers, but they can become a little bit overwhelming for some people. So make sure that you pick these flower heads off before they start sowing seeds everywhere. Now I've heard people call calendula calendula and also pot marigold. I actually call it pot marigold sometimes too. And that's not because you grow it in pots, which you can, but it's because that lovely orange color will survive the pot. So it will survive being cooked and you can use calendula to color baked goods. So cakes and muffins. You can also pluck the petals off and use them in salads. So they're a lovely medicinal herb, but also an edible flower. I'm home now with the calendula flowers. And before we get to processing them, we need to make sure that there's no bugs in the flowers. And what I tend to do is just put them out onto a cloth and leave them here for about half an hour or so. And that gives any bugs a chance to escape. I'm fairly confident that most of the insects are now gone from the flowers. If there's a couple left, it should be fine. They'll probably uh, make their way off of the flower as I'm starting to pluck the petals off. Now I've moved them inside and Louis has joined me. This is his box. This is where he lives basically. <laughs> he won't disturb us too much. But in any case, these are starting to wilt a little bit. So I want to get them off of the flower parts and drying as soon as possible. Now I have a couple of ways that I use to dry the calendula flowers and it kind of depends on how warm it is here in the house and outside, etc. So the first way, my favorite way is this really simple drying rack. It's just fabric kind of sheets and you can untie them and put them in the washing machine if you'd like. And these calendula flower petals I put on here, I think three days ago, and they're already bone dry. So I can just gather them off and I'll pop them into a glass jar. So I'm not going to wash this or anything like that. It's perfectly fine for several drawings worth of calendula flowers. All I'm going to do is just pluck the petals off and then leave them to dry here. Now, the reason I put the petals off is that I use the calendula flower petals in a lot of applications that I don't want the flower bits in. You can actually dry these, these flowers attached to the rest of the flower, but they can be a problem if say you're making soap and you want to combine the calendula flower petals into the soap. So it's just easier to, for me to pluck the petals off. You don't have to do it though. If you're going to make calendula infused oil, you can just leave them on the flower head and then dry them whole. It'll take a little bit longer for them to dry though, which is why you might want to use the second way that I 
dry calendula flowers, and that is in a food dehydrator. And if it's a little bit cool, or say I want to dry things that are a little bit wetter, I will pop my flower petals and other plant material inside. And it takes less than a day to dry most things. And that includes things like apple rings and things like that. With calendula flower petals, it doesn't take very long at all. I think about four hours is all. And it's relatively low watt. And I can recommend this model, but there's lots out there. I'll put a link down in the video description for some that I can recommend on Amazon, which is a great place to pick things like food dehydrators up. I'm not going to bother with that today though. We're just going to pluck the petals and put them on the drying rack. It's been a day now and it is still raining outside. Can you hear the rain hitting the roof here? The land really, really needs it. And it's a good excuse to be inside and finish up with making some calendula oil. So I'm gonna show you how I use the dried flowers to make beauty products. And actually it can be used as a healing ingredient as well. Now, when I'm drying out the flowers, I tend to give them a little bit of a fluff just to help speed things up. And the reason that I dry the flowers is that, first of all, they'll last for up to a year if you dry them out and keep them stored in a dark place. And also, one of the easiest ways to extract those natural healing and skin beneficial properties is to ex extract them into oil. And you need dried plant material to do that because if you use fresh, the, the petals can spoil in the oil and that extra little bit of water content can cause the oil to go rancid over time as well. So it's best to stick with dried material. So this stuff is still gonna be drying here, but I have the calendula flower petals that I dried earlier this week. And I'm going to show you how I extract them into sweet almond oil. And the reason I extract them into sweet almond oil is that I actually have a product, so natural calendula salve. And I've been selling this for years on my website, lovelygreens.co.uk. And I'll leave that as a link down in the video description as well. So this is a really sensitive salve that um, you can okay. use on minor cuts and, and minor wounds or just as a natural skin beneficial moisturizing balm as well, which I think a lot of people do use my, my products for. In any case, I also make it for personal use. And so for a small batch, like today, all you need to, to have on hand to make your own calendula oil is the dried flowers and then a liquid oil, a really light oil. So this is sweet almond oil, but you could also use um, sunflower oil, you could use olive oil, especially the really lighter grade olive oil. Um, anything that you personally are going to use to make your own beauty products. And it's, it's completely up to you. Also, the infused oil could be used in cooking as well. And that's how safe calendula is, is that you can take it internally if you're making your own oil or teas and use it externally and you can use it on all ages and I'm fairly certain that it's completely safe for pregnant ladies as well and a lot of a lot of um, herbs and herbal remedies you do have to be careful around children and elderly people and pregnant ladies but this is super safe right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in actually two different types of calendula flowers so these ones these are a yellow type and they're dried with the heads on and there's different essential oils and natural kind of chemical properties of the flowers that reside in different parts of the flowers. So in the flower head, the, the petals as well. So it's actually probably a good idea just to use the entire head and it's also not going to um, interfere with the oil itself like using flower petals in um, soap can be because it can leave that greedy texture if you use the flower heads in it. So we're going to use this and the other calendula flowers and just put them into a jar. Now what I'll do is I'll sprinkle a little bit of each. I love the orange petals in particular because they tint the, the oil a really lovely color. You can see that come through in the final product of the beauty products that you make. And it's been used to naturally color food as well for a long time, especially 
in India, in Arab countries. Uh, I think it was also used in the past in the West to tint butter, to make it, and margarine, I think, as well, a lovely color. But um, yes, so layer this together. All you need to do then is fill it with your choice of oil. And again, just fill it right up to the top of the jar. Put the lid on or snap it closed like I'm doing now. And then you want it in a warm place. So the conservatory here is quite warm or a sunny window, but there is some suspicion that UV light can damage the natural properties of calendula flowers. So if you're going to use a sunny place, pop it into a brown paper bag and that will help to protect the flowers. Now, as far as how long this needs to sit and to infuse, for those flowers to infuse into the oil, it's about a month, so four to six weeks. And then once it's complete, you just strain the oil out. You can bottle it up. You can use the same jar if you'd like and use it by the expiration date of the oil you're using. And that's a big one that I think isn't really addressed enough. Soap making and other beauty products. People ask, how long is the shelf life of this? It's going to be the nearest best by date of the specific ingredients that you're using. So if you're using oil that expires in two months, that's pretty much when you have to use your calendula oil or other beauty products up by. So try to get really fresh ingredients if you're gonna make something like this. And once you make it, you can use it in your creams and lotions. You can make a calendula salve or balm on your own. And I have lots of recipes over on my blog, so lovelygreens.com, as to how you can use calendula and calendula oil in both cooking and in making your own beauty recipes. And uh, I'll put some links that pop up on the screen, but I'll put a lot more down in the video description if you're interested in learning more about calendula flowers and their natural healing properties. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down as a comment below. And um, I'm, I'd be curious to know what your experience with calendula flowers is. And if you have any recipes, uh, leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week here on the Lovely Greens YouTube channel. Bye for now.